We're actually plugged into his thing because uh, yeah, that's fine. Because he's pointed out to me that there's a ground, yeah, there's a ground thing. So someone will get that. Ladies and gentlemen, and fans of all ages, welcome to Merrimack High School for tonight's Division I football game between the visiting Cardinals of Bishop Girton and your Merrimack Tomahawks. This game is being played according to the rules set forth by the NHIAA and its member schools. We ask that you, our fans, help make tonight's game a memorable experience for our athletes by showing good sportsmanship towards all players, coaches, and game officials throughout the contest. Inappropriate language, taunts, or other demeaning actions are grounds for removal from the game. As a reminder, no fans are permitted on the playing field or track at any time during the game. In the case of an emergency, please vacate the premises by the nearest exit at the end of the stadium. The officials for tonight's game are referee Jeff Kleiner, umpire Roland St. Germain, back judge Ryan Russell, Line Judge Barry Reddick, Linesman Mitch Masram Mateo. Would everyone please stand and remove your caps as we honor America with the playing of the National Anthem, performed tonight by the Merrimack High School Marching Band under the direction of Mrs. Bunny Serenita. <laughs> We'd like to welcome you and thank you for joining us tonight uh, for our big time tilt between your Merrimack Tomahawks and the Cardinals of Bishop Girton here underneath the Friday Night Lights down at Merrimack High School. Joined tonight in studio by an extraordinarily special guest as we will not have uh, your normal color commentator Ralph Carpentier joining us, but instead, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to have the one, the only, the voice of not only Merrimack High varsity basketball, both the girls and the boys, but also volleyball as well. Please join me in welcome welcoming the one, the only, Brian Gagnon. Brian, welcome aboard tonight. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, Dave. And, um, you know, I, I, I'm filling in for Ralph tonight. You know, I, I got to say, I, I, I wish I can only be half of what Ralph brings to the table. Well, I think we can only hope for that as well. I think half of Ralph is 
more than enough, I think, uh, on a broadcast for anybody. Um, <laughs> again, Ralph won't be joining us tonight, but we do have Brian uh, with us here for what's going to be a fantastic Week 3 matchup here between two undefeated teams, two very talented teams in the Merrimack Tomahawks and the Cardinals of Bishop Curtin. Weather could be a factor tonight. How do you see that playing out tonight, Brian? Well, you know, it's funny. I thought about this earlier, and I think it favors the Tomahawks, to be honest. I, I, I said... You know, not factoring in the weather tonight. Merrimack's going to have to ground and pound tonight. They're going to have to control the clock. No They're going to have to run the ball, keep the ball out of BG's hands. And I think the weather kind of forces the issue tonight yeah, a little bit. Absolutely. It could be a big night tonight for Romello Hyde, Merrimack star running back. As you all know, if you've been outside at any point today, it is quite blustery out there. I guess Summer decided to make an abrupt exit from our lives in fall, I think, ladies and gentlemen, is officially Tom here Hawks for sure. To defer, As we're going to get ready for the kickoff here the ball. in just a few minutes. And what should be an excellent game lesson. Again, Merrimack, your Tomahawks are 2-0, and coming off of wins against Alvern uh, and Nashua South, respectively, here to start the season. Uh, looking real strong here thus far. No shock there that a, a Kip Jackson coach team is so well prepared going into the season here. So this is going to be a tough test, though. Bishop Girton, this is a really quality football team. Yeah, no question. I, I go back to opening night against uh, Bonnie Eagle, and they, they haven't had a challenge like that you know, it, since that opening night. So uh, BG is going to be tough. And, and the turnovers from last week, they got to clean that up tonight because BG is going to make you pay. Yeah, and, no question uh, about that. You know, Nashua only scored seven points off of those turnovers last week. Uh, that will not happen this week. So you know, I, I, I would imagine knowing how potent BG is on offense. Yeah, I, I, I would imagine that was a uh, point of emphasis at practice this week. Absolutely. Cut down on the stakes. Usually the team that wins a turnover battle is the team that stands victorious here at the end as we get ready for kickoff as BG is going to be set to receive here. Also, we'd love to hear from you tonight, so if you want to give a shout-out, find Merrimack TV on Facebook or Twitter and comment on our most recent post or tweet. They're both about tonight's game, so let us know where you're watching from, the city and state, how you're watching, you're on the website, or you're watching on cable tonight or a streaming device, and of course, which team you're cheering for. So that's Merrimack, pardon me, that's Facebook.com slash Merrimack TV, and we're on Twitter at Merrimack TV. We'd love to hear from you, so please follow us while you're there. As the kickoff is away, that wind already a factor here. That was a relatively short kick here as BG uh -oh. looking to take this one down the sidelines here. We may have a touchdown to start tonight's game. And they're going to take that one all the way back to the house. Speaking of quick strikes here and the weather being a factor after a short kick that hung up in the air for a little bit, Bishop Girton able to convert that one and take it all the way back for six. As wow. they are going to strike first here. That's a... Not the start the Tomahawks were looking for, uh, to say the least. And you're going to see here, we, we talked about the kicking game a little earlier. Would that be a, a factor tonight, or are they going to go for two? I think you're going to see a lot of two-point tries tonight, but let's see what, they, uh, what BG cooks up here. It looks like the kicker is on the field. It does look like the kicker is on the field here, and it cannot be understated how windy it is outside tonight. Like I said, the, these kicks are tough the just on a regular conversion. day. And they are going to go for two. This here. is a two-pointer, yeah. Quarterback's going to roll out here to his right, looking for that far pylon. And that Set is going to be an unsuccessful two-point conversion attempt here. Pushed out of bounds. With your score here, you the pylon, if you blinked or you walked away to refill no your soda or perhaps uh, grab a snack uh, Bishop Girton just put up six, six on a long zero. kickoff return for a touchdown here to start the game Boy, a tremendous start for the Cardinals I mean you you, you can't ask for better uh, you, you know, that ball like you said just kind of hung up there long enough for the blocking to get set up and, and he goes right up the sideline and, and quick six for BG able to get that wedge see the seam and hit the afterburners there the rest is history as Bishop Girton here pulls ahead with a very early touchdown. They're going to get ready to kick off. Well, now you get to see how Merrimack responds. You're, you're at home. Big game here. Both teams unbeaten in the division. And, you know, first place kind of on the line here. So, you know, Merrimack needs a big response after, after that. Most certainly a game here that could have some playoff implications Lennon when we get to kick off for into the mid to late October. Brown. Deep so this is a big Tomahawks. one, to say the least, with 11.49 left here in the first quarter as the Cardinals, Bishop Girton, getting ready here to kick off to your Merrimack Tomahawks. 
I mean, you got to figure the the winner of tonight's game probably in the driver's seat for a for a home playoff game at worst. No question about that at all. And most assuredly, they'd have the momentum too and some confidence. As that kick put on the ground temporarily there, fielded though by Garen Brown as he's able to bring that up past the 25-yard line to what looks like the Merrimack 26. As Trent Jackson and company here will take over on offense. Brown on the return. We'll see if they're able to answer Bishop Girton's quick early strike here in the special teams game. Now one thing I noticed last week with the Tomahawks against South was their big playability and you know a couple Return of 20, 30 yard yards. plays and, First and you know, we'll, we'll see if they Tomahawks. can uh, see if put together a few of those tonight. Absolutely. Merrimack coming out here in the shotgun handoff here to Romello Hyde. You have to figure he is going to be a major part of the game plan as that ball is loose. Hyde on the carry, fumble on the play. Oh, Tough man. break right there for the Tomahawks. It's an early turnover and here, the deep in their own territory. The as Bishop Girton here is going to take over on offense. Well, we uh, we talked about turnovers at the beginning here, and, and BG is going to make you pay for these, Cardinals. and and we'll see if they can put up some more points. And uh, not the start the Tomahawks were looking for. Well, certainly not the start that they were looking for, indeed. Let's see Started here if the Tomahawks, Tomahawks defensive unit is up to line. the challenge. As right now, old Mo momentum all on BG's side. 11.30 here in the first quarter. Girton back in the shotgun. It's going to be hand out there to number three. That's Ethan Chemilecki. Chemilecki on the carry. Junior. Short game. Yeah, the, you know, the... the there's two sides to every coin, of course, and it, the, you would talk about the turnovers last week. Gain the of defense about two did on the play. make two stops Second and on, on the three turnovers last week, and only one touchdown for Nashua. So you got to give Merrimack's defense a Absolutely, including a great play by Romello Hyde as well. Absolutely. So he was able to generate a turnover. Had a great game defensively last week here. Second down, we'll call it eight here. BG with the handoff here to Chemilecki again. He's got some daylight. Is he going to be able to take this into the end zone? He dives in. Yes, it appears touchdown that that is going to be a Bishop Girton touchdown here. Three plays. Chemilecki. A kickoff return, a short handoff, and then a much longer handoff for a touchdown here. Bishop Girton is quickly ahead. 12 to nothing over the Merrimack Tomahawks. Well, this is a team that scored, I, I believe, 68 run. points last week against Goffstown. So you know this team can explode. Certainly a team with some serious firepower here. As that play is going to be blown dead before it has a chance to get going. It looks like a timeout. And we have a timeout, Merrimack. Timeout, Merrimack. Well, time timeout here, I would say. Even if it is on a two-point conversion. Yeah, Those points it, could make a huge difference here. You know, definitely an important two-pointer here. You know, you try to get some sort of momentum for your team. You know, if you get a stop here, you know, maybe that generates some momentum when you get the ball back on offense. You know, uh, you know, 12 nothing instead of 14 um, makes makes a big difference tonight. Most certainly does, especially with the challenges that they may be facing here in the kicking game. If you're interested in learning more about Merrimack TV, or maybe you'd like your own show on the Community TV channel, email Nicholas and Justin at MerrimackTV at MerrimackNH.gov. Again, can't say enough tremendous things here about the folks at Merrimack TV, Media Services Coordinator, tonight on camera, downfield side, Nicholas LaValle, back here in the studio, Assistant Media Services Coordinator, Justin Slez, or as we affectionately know him in these parts as the Sleshammer. Quarterback is going to keep that two point lunge forward, and that two-point conversion Santa is going to be successful for Bishop Girton here as they're going to pull ahead early. 14 to nothing with 10. 23, left in the first 23 quarter. here Cardinals left in the first quarter. 14-0 over our Tomahawks. Yeah, to, to be a fly on the wall in that timeout with Kip Jackson, I, I, I can't imagine that was a very pleasant uh, 60 seconds. No, I'm sure he was most certainly trying to get his team here back on track as Bishop Girton has really jumped all over them quickly. If you're just tuning in, a long kickoff return for a touchdown to open up the game, followed by a Merrimack turnover deep in their own territory, which two plays later, the Cardinals were able to convert. 
on a handoff to Brown Ethan Chimalecki. He's able to Tomahawks. take that back into Lennon the end zone. To kick off for and the that Cardinals. is how we have a 14-0 ball game here thus far. Well, plenty of football left. Plenty of time plenty left here. Plenty of football. <laughs> and if there's one thing that I know about Tomahawk football and about these Kip Jackson-led teams is that you can't count them out. And they most certainly have some firepower to display of their own here. There's Merrimack Field in that kickoff right past their own 10-yard line. Garen Brown bringing that up past the 25, near to the 30-yard line. We'll call that the Merrimack 28 here as Trent Brown Jackson and company come back out Baker here on company. offense for their second series. It's a real nice tackle there by number 52, BG. That was, yards, be first and ten, uh, uh, you know, you get by him here, you're looking at another 20 or 30 line. yards. So that, that was a big tackle. No question about that. Big time tackle right there. Well coached special teams. Jackson changing the play up here at the line of scrimmage. Merrimack with trip bun trips bunch to the near sideline. Hide in the backfield. Jackson steps back. He looks. He throws. You have to wonder if the wind may have affected that pass right there. That ball was intended for number 21. Jackson's Logan pass Day. Intended junior. for Day. Yeah, that was a that was a dying quail for sure. That thing off. was wobbling and yeah, it certainly couldn't even get to the intended target. The wind certainly knocking that thing down. No, most certainly not in their favor right now. We'll have to see if that wind subsides here as the sun goes down. Hand off again right here to Hyde. Good pursuit right there, east to west by the BG defense. As they're able to gobble that one up for a short gain. Tackled by Nieto and company. And that is going to bring up a third and long Gain of here. about two on the play. Yeah, that was uh, stacking the box right there. Hops. Nieto with a... Great Ball tackle to BG and uh, Nieto and company. I mean, there were four guys right there all over Hyde. Not much room there for Hyde to find daylight. Third down and a very long eight yards here. Ball on the Merrimack 30-yard line. Snap is away. Jackson looking left. He fires. Unfortunately, that pass is going to fall incomplete. Intended Jackson, for number eight, Jackson's Garrett Brown. And that Brown is going to bring out bring up fourth down, Merrimack Tomahawk. Tomahawk punting unit. Not what they were looking for right there on that offensive series. Yeah, three and out. Not what they're looking for. A again, only a minute 40 coming off the clock. Uh, BG's going to get great field position here. That uh, Merrimack the punt for the Tomahawks. punting into the wind. Back to receive uh, you're the giving the ball, back, the ball back to a very potent offense with plenty of time on the clock. Looks like we're going to get another Time stoppage out. play here. Bishop Girton. And a timeout is going to be charged to Bishop Girton here. Each team using a timeout here in the early going. Have you checked out our new concession stand? We would like to, to thank the following contractors for donating their time and talent. Yeah, you know, BG Electric, lo looking like the game plan CSSI, is they're, they're going to focus on Hyde tonight. No question. Landscaping and um, irrigation. You know. Hyde has just had no running lanes. Uh, you know, obviously we've seen very little of the Merrimack offense so far, but um, no running lanes so far. You can tell BG is keyed in on him tonight. Three, four guys on, on the line right there following his every move. Absolutely. Very sound defensive strategy there too. You know, again, you'll hear us talk about this throughout the course of the game. But the weather and the wind in particular is going to be a factor here. Merrimack able to get that punt away cleanly. Going to take a very favorable bounce off a BG player. Live ball right there, I believe, and Girton does come up with it. We'd love to hear from you tonight, so give us a shout-out. In fact, we want to give you a shout-out, so make sure you find Merrimack TV on Facebook or Twitter and comment our most recent post or tweet. They're both about tonight's game, so let us know where you're watching from, how you're watching, and, of course, which team you're cheering for. That's Facebook.com slash Merrimack TV, and we're on Twitter, at Merrimack TV. We love to hear you, so please follow us while you're there. Even if you're a BG fan, we'll, we'll take you. Not sure if our friends are joining us on Nashua ETV tonight, but for those in Cardinal Nation, welcome aboard. We're really happy to have you on tonight's broadcast joining us. Jim Lucky, the ball carrier. It's always really great to see just so much passion all throughout the state of New Hampshire 
for NHI AA Athletics. And of course, all of our friends joining us here all across Tomahawk Nation. We thank you for your support here. As Gurton getting ready to take back over here again on offense. Building a nice early cushion for themselves. With 7.45 here left in the first quarter. Gurton with a man in motion. It's going to hand off the number 12 in the jet sweep. See if he can find some running lanes on the outside. He's able to pick up a couple of yards there. Emerald nice on little the carry. Sweep. It's a big early possession for the Tomahawks. They need Pick a stop on the play. in a big, big way. And they almost got a break there on that on that kickoff. From uh, midfield. You know, the ball came down and hit the BG player, but uh, they, they need something to go their way here. And in a, in a stop would go a long way, I think. No question about that here. BG looking to the sideline here. Both offenses here featuring a spread package here. BG a bit more run heavy. Merrimack perhaps a bit more of a balanced attack. Read option right there. Quarterback's going to opt to keep this one. And he's going to plunge forward here for a Bishop Curtin first down. It Santa appears. Slozo on the keeper. Brought down by Sadowski. Gain of about seven on the play. Bring up a Cardinal first down. Ball spotted on the Tomahawk 44-yard line. Even just slowing it down here for Merrimack, I think, would be a help for the defense, even though they are out there on the field right now. It just feels like this game has been quite a whirlwind here to start with. You know, it's hard to get kind of heads or tails, get your bearings. Absolutely. In terms of where you are sort of in the flow of the game is the momentum has been all BGs thus far as that's another handoff to number three, Ethan Chemilecki. He's already got a touchdown on the carry, brought down by to Sadia. his credit tonight. But one thing I've noticed here, the, the BG side is so much bigger. I mean, it, there are some big kids on this team. You got a six-foot running back there play. with uh, Chemilecki. You know, 6'3", six, 6'4", six, 6'2", six, looking down the roster. Looking here, down right? the roster, a lot, of, a lot of height on the perimeter too. That big really kids. presents a serious challenge for the Tomahawk defense here to try to match up and defend. And we have an official timeout on the field. Numerous weapons that the uh, Bishop Girton Cardinal have on offense. <laughs> and if you're enjoying the game, make sure you check out more MHS Sports action for Merrimack TV on your Roku, Amazon Fire TV, or Apple TV device. Download Cablecast Screenweave to watch the next game live on the big screen. And as always, this is Merrimack TV, your community, your voice and tonight again very excited to be joined by brian gagdon very happy to be here and um you know i, I listen to you guys a lot dave and uh, ralph of course and uh you guys do a tremendous job with the football game so i wanted to tip my cap to you guys you guys do outstanding job with the tomahawks well brian the feeling is mutual especially that work that you do covering tomahawks basketball and tomahawks volleyball i had the honor and pleasure i believe to cover a playoff game with you earlier this year in fact over at the over at the gymnasium that was really a ton of fun very excited to have you here tonight and uh, just really great to be able to interact with some of the amazing volunteers that come here in merrimack tv to apply their trade whether it's behind a camera or if they're doing play-by-play -play broadcasts like you and I are doing tonight. It's really a tremendous community and an enormous honor to be a part of it here. Number 12, able to bring that pass in. That's uh, Chase Amarell, senior. Nice gain right there as they're bringing that deep back into Merrimack territory. And another fresh set of downs for BG. Amaral on the reception. Yeah, that, that play really Brought got Merrimack off Brown. guard. You know, the, the fake to the right side, got the whole defense shifted and then right back to the left side. That was the textbook the play Cardinals by BG right there. On that Excellent play. execution there for sure. Down. About five and a half minutes here left in the first. Ball Still plenty of football left to be played here. But BG really building a strong early lead. Again, the quarterback is going to keep that chugging upfield for some excellent yardage. BG's got to be averaging close to 8 to 10 yards of carry here to start this ball game. Yeah, the uh, Merrimack Frank defense Frank having Gain of very hard time slowing these guys down right now. 
BG trying to work some of the clock uh, on, on their side as well here uh, with the running game and some of the short passes. They have the wind in their favor right now, but you know it's it's a swirling wind too. I mean that you never know where that thing's going to take the ball tonight. Wind definitely going to be a factor, and already has been a factor in tonight's game, as I think BG is going to be content here to probably keep this ball on the ground as they've had a Come lot of success this far handing it off some of those Gain misdirections and those play. read options at the line of scrimmage have really produced some big plays here for the Cardinal yeah, you can't really spot a team like this a 14 nothing lead in the first minute and a half it, you're asking for trouble it, it's it's gonna be a Ball long night I think the for, uh, for the Tomahawks line. and unless they can uh, get some stops here Let's see if we're up to that right now as BG first and 10. Deep into Merrimack territory. There's a stop right there. Nice wrap up right there by Romello Hyde, number nine, coming in on that play. Really asserting himself as a strong carrier. defensive player this year, making Tackle contributions on both sides of the ball. They traditionally used to Hyde being that power no runner, someone that 10. is really Cardinals. adept at grinding out the clock at ends of games can also be a home run hitter too he's shown that type of speed before in his career and on that play making a real nice stop here and a much needed stop here is bg will be second and 10 inside the merrimack 20 yard line looks like the merrimack 14 will call it quarterback's going to keep this one looking for a running lane off to the right he's going to pick up about five or six Santa yards on the quarterback keeper it's amazing how easy Game he's making it look right now. I mean, like, there's not a lot Bring of space. He's, he's getting four or five. He's getting big chunks of yards here. And uh, that's credit to the blockers up front for Ball BG, the you know, creating those lanes. You can tell Merrimack's got guys up front. They're, you know, they're, they're, they're keying on him. But he's still getting his yards. Absolutely. They know what's coming. BG still bearing down here, doing a great job, winning the battle of the line of scrimmage, pushing that line of scrimmage forward. G fakes the run. Throw that out in the flat right there. Pass complete to number 12. That's Amaral Chase Amaral. The reception brought down by Brown. Senior wide receiver. He's had a couple of nice plays here in the passing game thus far. Gain of BG a few on really that play. Bring a fourth when they throw the ball, two. they're going to lean into play action. Why wouldn't you with that kind of running game right now at this juncture of the ball game? And, and Garen Brown with a, a touchdown saving tackle for the Tomahawks. Ball looks to be spotted on or around the six yard line. So we got fourth and two here. This is a big play for the Tomahawks. If they can get the Cardinals off the field. Huge momentum play coming up for that Tomahawks defense, as Brian mentioned. Oh, that ball. Unfortunately, that exchange, that's going to come loose out. here. Merrimack is going to stop that play before it can make that aforementioned two yards. Tomahawks. And the Tomahawks are going to take over deep in their own territory. But, Brian, that was the stop that they were looking for right there on that. That is drive. just Big what the doctor right ordered. There. <laughs> just what the doctor ordered right there for the Tomahawks. I mean, they Tomahawks desperately needed a stop. Desperately need some momentum. I mean, now you got a, a big field going against the wind. But two minutes left in this quarter. You're going to switch sides. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe that will help. But... What a play there. If nothing else, this will give the Tomahawk defense a much needed rest, I'm sure, on the sidelines right there after standing tall on fourth and two. Danoff is to hide. He pushes forward, but Hyde not the much carry. doing there as the BG defense. Gain of about two up. on the play. Second and eight Tomahawks from their 10. Second down, eight to go here is the clock. Winding down just about 80 seconds left here in the first quarter. There have already been some fireworks thus far. Very quick moving first quarter too on top of that. I feel like I blinked and here we are. So that handoff's gonna be to Garen Brown. Brown picking his way forward. Brown the ball carrier. Yeah, just no running room there at all for, for Brown. Gain of about three on that play. It'll bring up third and five Tomahawks. So you, got, you got third and five here. 
but, but, but again, you, you know, very hard to pass the ball right now. You, you need multiple running options here. And, you know, maybe this ball goes to Hyde and, and, and you, gotta, you gotta find a way to get him some space. We'll have to see here just what Kip Jackson and company have dialed up for this real important third and five here. As Jackson drops back to pass, looking downfield. He had an open man in Garen Brown, but unfortunately they're able, unable Jackson's to make the connection there. Brown, and that is going to bring up fourth and five, which means that the Merrimack punting unit box. is going to come back out here. There's a great penetration by the BG line there. And the, it just forced the throw a little bit low Lopez for, for, for Brown. For and just Brown had to get Jackson to shuffle his feet a little bit. Not quite feel comfortable yeah. back there in the pocket. Unfortunately, Brown had open field ahead of him. He certainly did. Good kick right there. Good deep kick right there, in fact. It's been a fair catch. Even the weather tonight. I think the Tomahawks will take that. Down at the 46-yard line. Yeah, it, it, and Cardinals this is where field 46. position becomes very important in this game and, you know, what side of the field you're on. It appears the wind, the, the strongest wind is going right to left um, on, on, on your TV. So, you know, right now Merrimack's going against it. And, you, you know, when you're pinned like that all the way back at the goal line, <laughs> you, they're lucky to be at midfield right now. It almost makes a field feel like it's twice as long as it actually is absolutely when you have to deal with the elements like that especially when you consider you know what a stout defensive unit bg has you know it makes that a pretty tall task so i'm sure merrimack will be looking here for the sides to switch hopefully get the ball back and try throwing hopefully with the win in their favor with 11 seconds left here in the first quarter well, i'll tell you dave i'm i'm happy we're here in studio tonight same. I was just about to say that to you, Brian. I am really happy that we are here in studio, and we'd love to hear from you tonight as well. We want to give you a shout-out. Find Merrimack TV on Facebook or Twitter and comment on our most recent post or tweet. They're both about tonight's game. and Let us know where you're watching from, the city and the state, how you're watching. You're on the website, or are you watching it on cable or a streaming device? And, of course... Which team are you cheering for here is BG with a big play right there. Again, that's number three, Ethan Chimalecki chugging deep into Merrimack territory here. So please head on over to Facebook.com slash Merrimack TV, and we're on Twitter at Merrimack TV. We'd love to hear from you, and please follow us while you're there. This is Merrimack TV, your community, your voice. As we are coming down here to the closing moments of the first quarter of this, tonight's ball game. It's another nice run right there by Bishop Curtin. San Suazo, bet by Hyde and company on the quarterback keeper. Gain of about 10 on the play. That'll bring us to the end of the first quarter with the Cardinals up 14 nothing over our top. And that'll conclude our action here for the first quarter. Bishop Girton, powered by a strong running game and some excellent special teams, have pulled ahead of the Merrimack Tomahawks 14-0 here as we get ready here for the start of the second quarter. Hey, Dave's Justin over here in the studio, sitting with you guys. I got some shout-outs here uh, on Facebook. We uh, got lit up here um, after you called for them. And you know what? Rhonda Bernier is out there watching from Nashua, rooting for Merrimack. She says, go Garen Brown, number eight. Uh, we also got Kevin Collins. He says, you asked for it. Here it is. I'm watching from the comfort of my home using a Roku TV wink emoji i'm channel surfing from this game in the battle of the bridge abd fnl nh's game pinkerton versus londonderry i'm pulling for bg go cards the only thing better than this would be a few more games to click between because i have a feeling this one and the battle of the bridge are going to be blowouts hit me up with the stream to the trinity game uh kevin if i can find you a stream to the trinity game i will certainly send that over to you is Kevin the super fan of super fans for NHIAA Athletics? Because I think he might be. That is one heck of a Friday night he's got lined up. Now I'm genuinely curious, like, what the heck is Kevin eating to fuel himself during this football bitch? Um, it's got to be it's got to be a big pile of goods. I gotta say, Kevin Collins, if he isn't the top uh, top NHIA 
AA fan. Um, he's definitely in the running. Um, certainly, certainly keep your votes ready to cast for possibly Kevin Collins out there. Um, we also got Christine Taruso watching from our living room in Merrimack, Go Tomahawks. And here's a familiar name, Kyle Crampton says, let's go Tomahawks. Our old was, friend. of course, our old buddy uh, QB last year. Kyle was, in fact, the starting quarterback for the varsity team last year. Great to hear from you, Kyle. Really excited that uh, that you're watching. And thank you very much for some fantastic memories uh, as Ralph and I got to watch your career unfold. Uh, right here from the Merrimack TV studio, which Brian and I are very comfortably in right now. Feel a little bit bad for media services coordinator Nicholas LaValle, who's on camera tonight. But I'm sure he's bundled up and uh, prepared for the elements here. No wind here. No wind here. As aside from the hot air coming through this uh, color mic here. But <laughs> yeah, the equipment throws a little bit of heat, but that's good. A little yeah, bit of heat will keep you warm. Gain of about four on the play. Good enough for a Cardinals first down. As that pass there was complete to number 12, Leo's Chase Amarell. Yeah, you know, BG's used that play a couple of times tonight. With, with, they get the Ball one on the receiver feet. set way to the side and... and Get the whole Merrimack defense on the other side. Get him move in one direction and go the other. Uh oh. And that one is going to be taken into the house right there as Bishop Gurton puts up their third touchdown here of the game. That one right on the legs on the quarterback keeper. Excellent downfield blocking right there. And BG again content for the ground and pound. Chewing clock and chewing up yardage here as they pull ahead here 20 to nothing. Yeah, this is uh, starting to turn into a laugher here as uh, BG's extending their lead. and Merrimack's going to need to get some points before halftime and, and get some stops. Going to need to get some points here for sure. Still plenty of time left in this game, 11.09 left. And I think you're right about the direction the that the wind's going in because right there, BG brought out their special the teams unit to actually attempt that Cardinals point after and they were able to knock that one home through successfully to pull ahead here, 21 to nothing. Well, we have uh, we do have a couple of viewers at home as well uh, that I need to shout out. I'd like to shout out my son Lucas and my wife Brittany and my daughter Lydia. Uh, Lucas and Brittany are watching at home tonight on uh, the HD TV, and Lydia is here in studio with us. Very very exciting. It's a it's a family affair here with the Gagnons. Getting, getting that's the, what we like to see. Getting to check out the TV studio and uh, absolutely you know, seeing seeing what Dad does on the side. So. Um, what Dad does very well on the side, too, I might add. Yeah, some, sometimes, right? <laughs> <laughs> and Brian, I don't know if you've heard or not, but there's a new concession stand at Merrimack High School. At halftime tonight, you'll learn more about Laura Wolf, Laura's World Fund, and an exciting new addition to the Student Memorial Field in our latest Merrimack Moment. And for more Merrimack Moments, subscribe to Merrimack TV on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Merrimack TV. So we're to make sure you check that out. Make sure you subscribe to Merrimack TV for all the haps, as they say here in the town of Merrimack. On the return. Well, that was another great tackle by Chase Amaral. You know, uh, Merrimack trying to break it up field there. They, they, he, he only had one or two more guys to beat, and Amaral made the big tackle for BG. Saved probably a big Hawks return for Merrimack. Yeah, really, really key tackle right there. Merrimack scratching and clawing, looking for some momentum here. Well, now you get the wind in your favor, and maybe you get this passing game going a little bit here. Maybe you get Aiden Centrella involved a little bit, and you know, uh, in Brown, some of these receivers with big plays the other night. Let's see what Coach Kip Jackson has dialed up here. On first down, it's going to be a pitch out to Hyde. Hyde's going to find some space here. Staying on his feet. Nice run. I think he lost his shoe there, too. Hyde on the pitch and carry. Yeah, heck of a run there by Hyde. And Gain of about seven on the play. Either lost his shoe or kicked up an enormous chunk of turf right there. Great Second run there, indeed, by Hyde. Hawks. Nice little piece of power football and power running there by Romello Hyde, the senior. Another handoff right here up the middle for Hyde. 
BG all over that one. Tackle made Met immediately by the BG defensive lineman. Baker. Pretty much at the line of scrimmage right there. I believe that no was uh, number play. 57, AJ Rasmussen, the senior. Loss of a yard, actually. Third and four. Uh, Merrimack Hawks. needs a first down here. They they are without a first down in this game. From their 33. You know, third and four here. Got to pick this one up. This is, in fact, a very critical third and four here for Merrimack. Jackson back to pass, looks to his right. He's got a man open. That's number 88. That's Owen Sadowski. Jackson bring Sadowski that pass in. I believe he had a touchdown last week, too. Had a real good game, did Owen. Big gain on the play. First down, Tomahawks. Yeah, that's a, that's a big one there for Merrimack and uh, really Ball what they the needed to, to try Huge to get this offense right going a little bit. Confidence builder. Start to build some momentum. Jackson here on the play action. Had some pressure in his face here. A little bubble screen for Sadowski. Right, that That's going to be the line of scrimmage. That ball may have come loose here. Pass complete to Sadowski. Bubble on the play. Wait and see what the referee's call here is. Oh, no. And BG. Seems like they've got it. And, in fact, yes, they do. So that's a real tough three. break right there for the Tomahawks. I believe that is their second turnover tonight. Yeah, and I don't know. Cardinals to me, it looked over. like Sadowski was down, but we we don't have the benefit of the challenge flag here. No, we certainly don't. But I'm I'm also wearing Tomahawks colored glasses, so starting from the Tomahawk 44. Look down line. to me, but I don't know. Looked out at me too, Brian. I think I've been uh, I think I went to the same lens crafters as you to get the uh, tomahawk uh, blue blocker shades, or maybe it's the maybe it promotes the blue light because of the blue team. Nonetheless, first and ten here for BG. Faking the handoff here, they're going to take it on the quarterback keeper for about an eight yard gain. Santos Lazo on the keeper, brought down by Sedia. Gain of about six on that play. Second and four. Yeah, that, that, uh, that keeper play. Ball just inside Santa Suazo, the top I'll tell you, yard line. He, he is quite the athlete. I mean, you, you watch him be tremendous on the basketball team as well, the boys' basketball team for BG. Uh, Look at you bringing out the basketball. I'll tell, I'll tell you what, I you like know, that. I, I had the cross sport you know, thing going on the other night too with, uh, with volleyball. Immediately noticed the basketball you, players. You have really added to your repertoire <laughs> of uh, sports that you can announce and do, uh, and do commentary for here, Brian. And multi-thread, I think, is uh, what we would say there. In baseball, the five-tool player. On that play. That's right. That was a, uh, another big stop there for the Cardinals. Tomahawks. Uh, Forcing third and six. You know, again, get this offense off the field couple of tough breaks here for Merrimack in the turnover battle as BG here looking to march just under eight minutes here left in the second quarter And tonight you're going to learn all about the new concession stand at Merrimack High School. At halftime, you'll learn about Laura Wolf, Laura's World Fun, and an exciting new addition to the Student Memorial Field and our latest Merrimack Moment. And for more Merrimack Moments, subscribe to Merrimack TV on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Merrimack TV. That looks like a uh, good crowd tonight. Having some fun at the... Uh... Friday night football game. The MHA's quarterback club. Doesn't matter MHS, what the score is on a Friday me. night. Doesn't matter. Friday night likes the week's over with, tournament. the school week's over with, Sunday, the work October week 2nd, might be over with. Like, life's good. Nothing better. Legion. Nothing better. And you got a, got a rivalry game like this. Great, great division game. And, uh, you know, happy to be here tonight. Working with you, Dave, and uh, bringing this to you. Absolutely, Brian. We are psyched to have you here. And as always, want to say thank you 
to media services coordinator Nicholas Lavalley. He is on camera tonight, fieldside. And back here in the studio, we have assistant media services coordinator Justin Slez. Third and six here for BG. See if Merrimack can get a stop here. Nice pass right there. That ball is going to be complete. Good zip on that ball, too. One of the rare times here they've really had to throw down field. First down, Cardinals. That was a heck of a throw there by Santa Suasso. I mean, that that was, that was one of those throws when you have a PlayStation controller in your hand, you're playing Madden, you hold down the circle to really rifle it That's in there. That's the one. The bullet pass, I think they call that. <laughs> and, and he had to he had to really zip it in there too. And up again there to Chimilecki. He's had himself quite a ball game tonight. Merrimack, though, keys in on that stop. Number 90 to Nathan Cedillo, who had himself a good game carry. last week in on that one. Two on the play. Second and eight Cardinals. Yeah, BG right now, the 21 point lead, they're in no rush. They're happy to milk this clock right now, take their time. And, just keep uh, that Merrimack defense on the field right now. Yes. In a defense that has been on the field quite a bit the last couple of weeks. Not only have they been on the field quite a bit, it's worth mentioning, too, that most of these players play both on offense and defense. So there's really not much of an opportunity here to rest on the sideline as most of these tremendous young student athletes here are playing both sides of the ball, doing double duty, as they say. Comes BG again out in the spread formation. They're going to pitch that off to the left. That's the number three, Ethan Chimilecki. Down inside the 10, inside the five. He dives Ooh. to the pylon. It's going to be close. Let's see if they give him that touchdown. Or if they're going to spot that just. Chimilecki on the pitch and carry. Spot him at the three. That's that's interesting. Driven interesting spot right there. That ball. With a four. Placed down at the uh, four yard line, it looks like. I thought he, I thought he had that. Well, from the, TV, from the TV studio, it looks like he was able to dive in and hit the pylon. But Cardinals. We got a great view from, from in here. We do, and it's warm. <laughs> Monitors are great. There's plenty of Poland spring bottled water here, That's too, right, so yeah. Brian and I can stay hydrated throughout tonight's <laughs> action. Hydration is key. First and goal here for BG on the keeper. And Merrimack is going to stop that. Santa Suazo on the quarterback keeper. Inside the two, maybe three yard line. Gain of about two on that play. Second in goal, Cardinals. Well, Merrimack had a, a couple of these goal line stands against South last week. And we've already seen one tonight inside the 10. They're going to need to pull another one out here. I mean, this uh, they're putting themselves in some really tough positions here the turnovers really have made it difficult for Merrimack to kind of get themselves moving and righted so to speak getting going here in the right direction 537 left here in the second quarter and, and if you're watching tonight we'd Cardinals. love to hear from you we want to give you a shout out so fine Merrimack TV on Facebook or Twitter and comment our most recent post or tweet they're both about tonight's game and let us know the following, where you are watching from. That includes the city and state. How you are good watching. Are are you on the website? No the you're watching on cable? Are you on a streaming device like Roku or Apple TV? And you of course, which team you're cheering for. for all by and that's facebook.com slash Merrimack TV. And, and we're on Twitter, at Merrimack TV. So we'd love to hear from you tonight. And please, follow us while you're there. Yeah, we actually have some national appeal. You know, we, we, we reach in homes across the country and uh, you know great to hear from all the families that are able to watch it's really very cool to see how families are able to engage with you know the athletics the events the things that you know their uh, you know their relatives their you know their their nieces their nephews mm -hmm. um, their grandkids you know the, the things that they're doing here in Merrimack you know whether that is you know volleyball or basketball or football or maybe they're tuning in to watch the marching band or some of the concerts that Merrimack TV puts on throughout the year like really incredible stuff uh, you know that folks can tune in to watch all throughout the country I think last year our furthest 
viewer was in like Grand Rapids, Michigan, or maybe it might have been like Port St. Lucie, Florida too. Mm -hmm. And we, we were doing some Google mapping and it was there was some serious distance out there for some of the folks that you know, were tuning in and watching. So always carry. very, very exciting to see that and great to know that Tomahawk Nation has no boundaries. That play, bring That's right. Not just in Merrimack, Cardinals. but all throughout these fine United States. Another big third down here for the Tomahawks. You gotta think, you know, BG's going four downs here this close to the goal line and with all the talent on this team and on this line they i gotta give the bg offensive line a ton of credit as they they've, they've played really really well tonight really moving together very well and that one is elementary as bishop Curtin again able to put up their touchdown, fourth touchdown here at the half on the quarterback keeper and that is going to put BG ahead here over the Tomahawks, 27 to nothing. Make sure you stay tuned here at halftime. We are going to see the, point the Merrimack High School Marching Band, led by Marching Band Director Bunny Serenita. I believe we are also going to get the Bishop Girton Marching Band tonight, too. The Sleshammer's giving me a nod. And also, we're going to have a very special Merrimack Cardinals moment up. tonight. As we're going to learn about the, the new concession stand that is at Merrimack High School. You're going to learn about Laura Wolf, Laura's World Fund, and an exciting new addition to the Student Memorial Field in our latest Merrimack moment. And for more Merrimack moments, make sure you subscribe to Merrimack TV on YouTube. YouTube.com slash Merrimack TV. I, I, I gotta say, uh, the Sledgehammer might be my all-time favorite nickname. Yeah, I think that nickname that just came to me last week. I think in a conversation with Ralph about heartburn. Yes. For those that are uh, loyal viewers of the Merrimack Tomahawk football uh, home game schedule here, you often hear Ralph and I talk a lot about our favorite football snacks. And last week we learned that uh, to kick off for the one of Ralph's family members, I believe, to receive uh, for the Tomahawk digest. Raw baking soda in order to combat heartburn, which I suppose is a solution, but not one I think I'd go to first. Yeah, um, Arm and Hammer, probably not my go to uh, heartburn solution. No. Short kick right there. Merrimack having some issues fielding that one. They're able to pick that one off, off the deck. Another fumble. And we had another fumble there, too. Return, and the ball comes loose. Oh my goodness. And the Tomahawks recover. Oh, and recover. Merrimack is able to recover there. I believe they've recovered two of their own fumbles tonight, and they've lost two. Uh, ball security, Tomahawks kind of an issue right now. Yard line. No question about it. The turnovers here have really made life a bit more difficult. That may be an understatement. A lot more difficult for the Tomahawks here as they're trying to get something going here. Just trying to get some points up here on the board before we break for half here with 444 left here in the first half. That pass is going to fall incomplete. Intended for Jackson's Aiden Centrella, for Centrella, who had himself a great ball game last reach. week. Second down, Tomahawks. Yeah, the, the, the big difference here, points off turnovers, you know, 14 points for BG, and they, they've they've made Merrimack pay for both fumbles lost tonight. Um, when Nashua did not do that last week, they, they kind of got a little lucky last week that they were unable to capitalize. A ball a bit high there intended for number 14. That's Jackson Forbes. Jackson's Junior. pass intended for I mean, we talked, senior. We talked about it right at the outset. You, know, like you can't make the same turnovers tonight because BG's going to make you pay, and they've done it. Too many quality teams all throughout the state of New Hampshire here that will absolutely make you pay if you don't protect the football. And tonight, credit to the BG defense. They have been forcing turnovers. They are very clearly coached to be ball hawks out there. No question. The, the Belichick school... Of, of ball hockey, no question. Absolutely. As Merrimack here, third and ten, Jackson drops back the pass, looking deep, fires one. And that pass, unfortunately for Jackson's Merrimack, is going to fall incomplete. Well, I figure you probably had to take a shot at some point. I don't know if that was the the right spot for it, but 
they had to take a shot downfield eventually down 28 nothing uh, but right now I mean, this BG defense is stout. stout to say the least they are stout for sure here as Merrimack getting ready to punt this one away snap is clean kick is away good distance on that kick that's going to take a bit of a Merrimack bounce here BG though Tent to field that one, and they're going to take that up past midfield and walk that one out of bounds. Santa Suazo on the Becoming a high school sports official is an easy call. Officiating allows you to continue to 10. be a role model by demonstrating qualities such Cardinals as impartiality, fairness, and courage. High school sports That's officials help protect the integrity of the games we love by teaching and enforcing the rules of play. New officials have an opportunity to make a difference in their communities right away. To learn more about becoming a high school sports official, please visit www.nhiaa.org. Always looking for fantastic people there to be officials for sports all throughout the state here, so make sure you check that out. As BG out here again, back on offense with 415 left here in the first half. And that's a junior, Ethan Chimilecki. And they, Merrimack Chimilecki had him in the, the backfield, but looked like a missed right tackle there. Uh, Sadowski had him wrapped up. And nine on that play. He uh, got through, got an one. extra six Cardinals. yards on that. Chimilecki there with a good leg drive, always pushing forward. He's been impressive tonight for, for Gurton. He certainly has a lot of bright marks here for Bishop Gurton here as they look to assert themselves as one of the best teams in the state thus far in this early season. Another handoff to number three, Chemilecki there. The Tomahawks all over that one as they read that play well, and they're able to bring him down behind the line of scrimmage here. Chimilecki on the carry. Excellent no work by Sadia the right there for Merrimack. And forcing a third and one. Third and some pocket change here for the BG offense. I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here. I feel like this is going to be a keeper um, by, by Santa Suazo. Just a, just a guess. We're going to have to take a look here and see if this comes true. And it does. What a call, and Brian. There he goes. Who said, it, now who said I didn't know football? I think that you might be replacing Ralph no, with that no, type of call. Oh, my goodness. I don't Plus know about Ralph that. Ralph with his baking soda. My goodness. My, we can't, can't have that in the TV studio. I, I, I mean, they, they can't stop him right now. It, it, it is – he, he, he is right now nine. on another level. <laughs> Merrimack just cannot I – mean, they're throwing eight and nine guys at him. They, they cannot stop. Dylan Santa Suazo right now. Valiant effort here nonetheless by that Tomahawks defense here as BG really exerting their dominance here, particularly at the line of scrimmage and through the ground game with 2.50 left here in the first quarter. Oh, nice play there. And if Ralph's somehow tuning in at home, we're just kidding. Brian's not going to replace you. No, absolutely. Tim Lucky on the carry. Uh, you, you know, the other the big game going on tonight, uh, we, we alluded to it um, doing the shout-outs, but they, they battled the bridge tonight, goal. north and south. Um, you know, north honor around the 11. appears to be very, very strong. I, I, I think they might give Gurton a run for their money, but I, I tell you, th this team I'm seeing tonight, I don't know many teams that are going to beat them. They are certainly looking like a juggernaut here. It's Chemilecki coming out of the backfield to catch that pass. He's going to bring that close to the goal line here. Chemilecki on the reception, brought down by I mean, High. It, it's been a lot of Chemilecki. It's been a lot of Santa Suazo, and it's Gain of been their offensive play, line. Just third and goal. The opening lanes for these guys. Opening big ball running lanes. lanes. I, I mean, the BG three. ground game for like, sure. Like, like four-lane highways for these guys. It's, it, 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 you know, tip of the cap to their offensive line. I mean, it, 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 the protection they're getting and, and the lanes they were opening up, obviously very, very well coached. Very, very well coached here. Santa Suazo on the quarterback keeper. And he's going to be able to walk Cardinals. that one in with ease right there as Bishop Curtin tacking up. 
tacking on rather their fifth touchdown here in the first half as they're going to pull ahead here 34 nothing pending point after attempt i mean it, it, it's it's demoralizing when you, you know you you know you can't Let stop for the extra the guy like, like it, it, he just pretty much walked right in there um you can kind of see it in the body language right now merrimack it's it this is tough and the kick is good with a with 124 left in the half, Cardinals 35. And that Tomahawks kick is good, zero. so BG going to pull ahead here, 35 to nothing. As you mentioned, Brian, this game has been all Bishop Girton Cardinal here thus far. If you're watching at home tonight and you're interested in learning more about Merrimack TV or perhaps you'd want your own show on the Community TV channel, make sure you email Nicholas and Justin. Merrimack TV at merrimacknh.gov also if you're interested in volunteering which brian and i are both here we're volunteers uh merrimack tv always looking for volunteers you know maybe you feel like you can do a better job broadcasting football play by play come on down make sure you volunteer um love to have you down here uh really just again uh, this is a tremendous operation i can't sing their praises enough it's always an absolute honor and a pleasure to be down here at Merrimack TV Studios calling these Tomahawk home football games. It's been a ton of fun these past couple of years. And if you'd like to volunteer, maybe you'd like to do some play-by-play -play for some games, come on down, chat with Nicholas, chat with Justin. Make sure you send him an email, merrimacktv at merrimacknh.gov. I know they'd love to hear from you. And we thank you for tuning in to tonight's action. So that ball is going to go into the end zone here for a touchback with a minute 24 left in the first half. Helmig well, touches the ball I in mean, the end zone. Touchback. Got to, got to try to get some points here before the half. I mean, you know, even six Tom right now would, would be better than nothing. So, I, I mean, go to your two-minute drill here. I tell my teams, you know, in baseball, if we're down – really big like this you know score zero zero let's wipe the slate clean let's see what we can do um you know forget about the scoreboard let's try to do something good here and let's put something good together and merrimack's got to put a good drive together here get some momentum before the half just trying to go into the halftime here with something good to hang their hat on and what has been a fairly one-sided affair thus far and they are getting the ball to start the second half so Try to get some points here. A little trickeration right here. That's Centrella looking at the option pass. Instead, he's going to opt to take that, run that one out of bounds. Didn't see anybody open downfield. Centrella on the flea flicker. Trickeration. I like that one. Three yards on that play. Second I think it's in the Merriam-Webster's dictionary. Maybe not. I'm sure, I'm sure one of our viewers at home will, will call me on that. But for tonight, trickeration's a word. It's in the Dave Carter dictionary the dave carter dictionary and for me personally that might be all that matters that's all i can remember i don't know many fancier words than that as that pass is going to be complete to centrella bg defense all over that here as the clock Jackson's continues to tick complete to centrella. Yeah, it, 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 and this is the first we're seeing of centrella tonight, about really. three on that play. Second, he's been involved in the last two plays and, and he was he was huge last week uh they, they just can't get him open Right now, you know, again, credit to the BG defense. BG defense here. Pitching a shot out. Looking a bit like the 85 Bears tonight on a blustery night down at the high school on the field. Ooh, Centrella right there. Hopefully he's okay. Jackson he got hit pretty hard. He did pop Centrella. back up. It's going to be a Brought personal foul. It does look like we're going to get a personal foul right there. And Charlie taking a big hit on that penalty. Popped right back up, though. He's yeah, heading back towards the sideline for a Gatorade and a breather. Thankfully, he's okay. I mean, that, that looked like some helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact there from, from our vantage point. And, um, they'll get the personal foul and 15 yards, hopefully, here. Did they pick the flag up? No penalty on the play. Wow, they, they picked call it up. Back. Okay. Wow. No penalty in that one. Good to see Centrella was able to get up, and he's okay. And this here is going to bring up a fourth down for the Tomahawks. I think Kip Jackson wants an explanation. 
I don't blame him. I can't say I blame him either there. Team, I think that's at least worth a conversation. Team down 35 nothing. You know, you need something to go your way here. This, is, this has been a penalty-free first half. Pretty amazing to think that. That That is almost unheard of. And we have a timeout, Tomahawk. Particularly compared to last week's game, which Tomahawk's defense was plagued by penalties like in the first half. They were able to write that. And three when play as they marched their way to victory. Their second win of the season. So, so Dave, you talk about snacks. And, and i got to get my... Um, you know, but I, I'm on the record on the on the basketball broadcast uh, as being a nacho guy. But Great choice. In our society, it has to be. Has come to mean everything. It, 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 it's got to be layered. At the expense like, of good and it's got to be layered properly and with thought and care. Yes, yes. In the long run. You know, if you good do not layer is the your cheese of a on the nachos, I, I feel like that is a, your that's a violation and in, in my book. I would throw Remember, a flag on that. Good you know, are um, no matter the score. And I'm a cheese guy. You know, I'm a cheese nacho guy. Yep. Got to be green salsa, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, I like the green salsa. That's a unique choice, but that brings a lot of flavor. You know, and uh, if I'm adventurous, we go with the jalapeno peppers. The jalapenos, all right. We got a full flavor palette here. Yes. In the Gaggin household and the nachos. I like that. We got like a we got the che the cheese layered properly. There's structure. There's architecture to yes. it. Yes. There's thought put into the materials that you're making it out of. What types of cheeses do you like to go with? Is that pass is complete though? And Sadowski is going to take that one out of bounds. Sadowski on the reception. Big first down there. Um, Got to go with the, the Monterey Jack, the yeah, you know, uh, the Cheddar down. Jack uh, kind of blends. The blend, yep. yes. A little Monterey Jack, some yes. Cheddar Jack. Those are all excellent choices. Maybe Pepper Jack if you really want to mm. add some spice to it. Well, on the 37 Maybe not. Maybe line. that puts you on the, the Arm & Hammer baking soda train with, with Ralph, as he described last week, to tackle Harper. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Oh, I, 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 had to, I had to chime in on that. On that one. Well, we have to document everyone's snacks, Brian. And yes. Now, I, you know, I think that those are those are a gentleman's choice. The nachos. Nice grab right there by Sadowski. He's going to bring that one in here. Hey. Jackson's pass complete That's a real to nice one there. Uh, First down, you, Tomahawks. Running out of time here. You get the clock's still running. Oh, I'm sorry, the clock stops until they spot the ball here, and I believe Merrimack is out of timeouts. Looks like we may have a few difficulties here with the feed. And Jackson's going to spike that way down. Stopping the clock. Yeah, scoreboard showing the teams with the three timeouts, but I believe Merrimack has used them all. Uh, 17 seconds left here. <sighs> yeah, you know, you got the wind. Maybe you try a long field goal if you, Second, you can get some yardage here. But. I mean, like I said, you need something going into halftime. Empty backfield, five wide receivers here for the Tomahawk offense. Trent Jackson takes a snap, quick pass, complete to Sadowski. And unfortunately, that pass Jackson's is going to fall incomplete here. For Sadowski, 13 falls seconds incomplete. left here in the first half. Third down, Tomahawk. Merrimack looking to put together a string of positive plays here so they can build some momentum to take with them into halftime on what has been a very windy, very one-sided night here in Merrimack as the BG Cardinals have really shown off their offensive weapons and that ferocious defense as they've generated several turnovers this evening which have led to BG points. Jackson takes a snap, rolling out to his right. Looking downfield, he fires. He's got a man open. That pass is complete to number five. That's Ryan Turley. Jackson's pass complete to Turley. Hitting the big fella right there. Tomahawks. Hitting the big fella. That's a, you know, Turley had one last week. I remember he was dragging guys. You know. Ball <laughs> started just inside man. the 40-yard line. This guy's strong. Looking like Gronk in like 2011. Yes. Jackson here rolling on to his left. He fires one. Almost had, I believe that was Aiden Centrella hanging out behind the defender. Incomplete. Ball almost got picked off as well. Bit of a 50-50 opportunity there. But hey, you got to take risks downfield, especially Second down, with so little time here left in the first half. Just trying to build some momentum, trying to get on the board here with one second left. Make sure you stay tuned here 
at halftime, you're going to be watching a live performance from the Merrimack High School Marching Band, led by Marching Band Director Bunny Serenita. I believe we will also have the Bishop Girton Cardinal Marching Band. And of course, as you may have heard me talk about earlier tonight, there's a new concession stand at Merrimack High School. And at halftime tonight, you'll learn more about Laura Wolf, Laura's World Fund, and an exciting new addition to the Student Memorial Field in our latest Merrimack Moment. And as always, for more Merrimack Moments, subscribe to Merrimack TV on YouTube, youtube.com slash Merrimack TV. Dave, if I may just jump in here before the end of the half, I got one more shout out to make before we uh, check out the bands. We got Dawn, she says, Mrs. Legay here, watching on local channel 21 from the comfort of my couch. Go Tomahawks. She's got a nice tomahawk blue heart nestled between a couple football emojis there. Dawn, thanks for watching out there. I hope you got some popcorn or well-layered nachos that you're munching on tonight. And we'd love to hear from anyone else out there in TV land, internet land, streaming land. Check it out. Leave us a comment on Facebook or Twitter. And this is Merrimack TV, your community, your voice. That was the golden pipes of Assistant Media Services Coordinator, Justin Slez here, who's with us in studio, reading some shout outs. I think Brian is uh, getting a lot of people in Merrimack to really consider how they're layering their nachos. What? Oh, I, I, I hope so. Someone right now might be in their kitchen making a plate of nachos Ball and they just overheard us talk the about box. the importance of good structure and layering of the cheese. <laughs> and they may have changed their entire approach to I, that nacho plate. I can only hope. We can only hope here. <laughs> As that concludes, or almost concludes here, our first half of play. Now we're going to get this final play away. Jackson takes the snap. Drops back to pass. And he is going to be sacked. Jackson tackled in the by picking up the fumble out. there. And that, that is going to conclude high. our first half of play here as the, the Bishop the Cardinals time. are ahead of the Cardinals Merrimack Tomahawks. 35, Tomahawks. 35 to nothing here in a game that has been a boat race so far. Curtin able to strike first along special teams kickoff return here to open the game up to put their first points of the board up and then since that point in time it's been a story of the BG ground game and the BG defense generating turnovers and giving their offense a short field Tonight, please to work welcome off of our here. guests the 2022 Bishop Girton High School Cardinal Marching Band with that said we thank you for joining us for the first romance. half Brian and I are Featuring going to take a little bit of break romance. So that no you other man and forget can you. listen to the fantastic sounds the of the Bishop Girton the Cardinal High School Brian Marching Stark, Band and also and your Merrimack High School Marching Band as well under the fantastic Dave direction of the US Marching AM. Band Director Bunny Sarnita. So Ron thank you very Bustle. much for watching the first the half here. We'll have a Merrimack moment as well on the new concession stand at Merrimack High School. So stay tuned for that and we'll be back with the second half in just about 20 minutes. Thank you.
And now, please welcome our Merrimack High School Marching Tomahawks. Tonight's show features music from the legendary rock band Led Zeppelin and includes songs from Cashmere, Whole Lot of Love, and Stairway to Heaven. The band is under the direction of Bunny Serenita and is assisted by R.J. Beck. The color guard instructor is Danny Dunn. Jennifer Noseworthy instructs the drum line. The band is led on field by drum majors Eris Corman O'Reilly and Sam Martin. Kenny, Katie Inomarati is the drumline captain. Color guard captains are Becca Robinson and Ella Guzman. Ladies and gentlemen, the Merrimack High School Marching Tomahawks.
When you watch live sports, there's a decent chance you're going to get hungry or thirsty, so it's important to have a concession stand ready to handle that demand. The old one at the MHS football field was not up to snuff, so local charity Laura's World Fund took on the task of building something that would better serve the community. The Laura's World Fund was started after Laura Wolf, who was a varsity cheerleader here at Merrimack High School, passed away tragically in a car accident in 2004. And the foundation was started to raise money for children, especially underprivileged children. Over the years, they've started many different water projects in Ethiopia. And now we said, let's do something for Merrimack. Let's do something for the kids here and give some more town pride. So we said, let's, let's get rid of that shack at the, at the student memorial field at the high school and let's build a real nice concession stand that can be used by all the student bodies, all the clubs, even graduation and something to be proud of. From football to soccer, this stand is ready for many different sports and events on the field. From the planning phase to finishing construction, the project took about four years, but was of no cost to the town. It was funded entirely by donations and sales of personalized, etched bricks on the walkway. You could also get a replica of your brick, many of which were out on display when they cut the ribbon at the first MHS football game of the season. After that, the new stand opened for business, and they fired up the grills as Tomahawks fans lined up to order at the counter. The improvements over the old one were immediately clear. Refrigeration the ability to take credit cards, and not only running water, but hot water. This stand is set up for success. And by some coincidence, or maybe tomahawk spirit in the air, Merrimack won the game against Nashua South, 27-21. While a concession stand may seem small at first glance, it represents a community coming together and building something better for the next generation. And we can be confident that wherever Laura is, she's watching. I think she would be super, super proud. I mean, she was a ray of sunshine. You know, she was a cheerleader, so she wanted the best for Merrimack and she wanted the best for her team. So she would feel like she's doing her part to support the team. Thanks for watching. about 7,400 nutritious meals to homebound, older, and disabled adults throughout Hillsborough County. Drivers provide a friendly visit, social connection, and wellness check. For the majority of these older and disabled the Meals on Wheels participants, the driver who delivers the meals is the only person they will see that day. Right now we're just about to come out of halftime here with Bishop they will see all week long. Last year, Meals on Wheels of Hillsborough County provided over 300,000 meals. 94 percent of the clients report that Meals on Wheels helps them stay in their homes. Over 150 volunteers work off of a short field here and really capitalize on those opportunities as Bishop Girton really establishing themselves tonight as one of the premier teams in the state in this tilt between two undefeated teams interdivisional matchup here. Um, BG's really good. Um, that, that's my my number one takeaway. Uh, that was that was the Matt Santiswaso show. To be honest with you, um, three touchdowns in that first half. Yeah, uh, you know, Merrimack really with no answer uh, for him defensively, and this was BG's game really from the. Literally the opening it kickoff. Off. So, I mean, it, it, it has been all Cardinals. If you're Merrimack now, I'm sure the the speech in the, in the locker room was 0-0. Zero, zero. Let's have a good second half. Let's build some momentum. Um, I'm not sure who's on the slate next week, but got another big game coming up. Let's get some positive momentum, some positive plays going into our next game. Take it one play at a time. Mm -hmm. Build that momentum. Build that momentum throughout the rest of this game and potentially into the week of practice as well here. We'll have to see how this one plays out. Still plenty of time left in this game, but Bishop Girton thus far has really built a dominant lead, and they've been moving the football with very little resistance from the Merrimack defense. I think the size disparity here tonight has definitely been on display here. Bishop Girton. Really a big team, an experienced team. 
They have size out on the perimeter as well. It really makes it some tough matchups for the Tomahawk defense here to try to account for as we will be kicking off here to start the second half in just under a minute here. I believe Merrimack will be getting the ball. In fact, I know for a fact that Merrimack will be getting the ball. Brian has also taken some fantastic notes. Yeah, you know, also looking at some of the stats online, uh, BG 222 to 49 in yardage. Total yardage. Huge um, disparity just, right there. Can't say I'm surprised by that uh, stat line. You know, when, you, when you're four to one, uh, you, you're out gaining <laughs> your opponent four to one, um, it, it, it higher than that actually. That's just complete domination. And uh, Santa Suazo again, three touchdowns, 81 yards rushing, five of five passing as well. Um, just, just tremendous. Um, tremendous really, job by BG. Really operating that BG offense at maximum efficiency this evening here. The windy weather certainly has not slowed them down one bit. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I think Merrimack still kind of, you know, still trying to get into that upper echelon of teams, uh, particularly even here in their own division, in, in their West Division. You know, right now it's BG and North. And I, I even think there's a chasm between BG and North. You know, it, it, North right now, I, I, last check, they were, they were up 6 nothing on South at halftime. We saw South last week. You know, Mer Merrimack. You know, Merrimack handled them. Handled, handled them, them well. well. That game was probably closer than what the score indicated. Um, but, 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 you know, BG, it, 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 once they're going to play North, I think that they're the two best teams in the division. Um, thinking of other teams in the state that might challenge BG, Londonderry might be there. Uh, they're, they're another team just absolutely loaded every single year. They're up big on Pinkerton tonight. You know, that might be the best chance um, for somebody to knock off BG, but I'll tell you, th this team looks really, really good. We're starting to definitely see the picture become a bit more complete here in terms of who the dominant teams are in the state of New Hampshire. Also, just watch a great halftime show, too. Want to say thank you to the Merrimack High Marching Band. Also want to say thank you to the Bishop Girton High School Marching Band as well. That was tremendous. And also during the halftime show, you learned about the new concession stand Running at Merrimack High School BG, thanks to the Laura's World half, Fund. For more Merrimack moments, make sure you please subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Merrimack TV. As BG here gets ready to kick this one away, that's number eight, Connor Lennon. A six foot four kicker wide receiver. Junior here. Tomahawks here. Nice return right there. That's number 32. That's Dominic Helmig, the senior. The able to bring that one up for a nice gain here. Up to the Merrimack 40 yard line. And, and exactly what they needed there. Get a little a little bit of field position. With a you know, return. you're not Tomahawk starting. Start. When your back's against your own end zone, you know, it's uh, you get a little room to, to play with here. You know, ball in the 40. Let's see if we can get something going here. It might be the best field position that Merrimack's had all night long. I, I think, I think not even close. It, it is easily the best. So, another one of those positive plays we were talking about here is that pitch is going to go right to Romello Hyde. He's going to find some running room here. And he's going to be upended just past the 50 yard line, all the way down to the Bishop Girton. Good enough for a Tomahawk. 46, maybe 47 yard line. Let's see where they spot that one. Looks like that's officially going to be just about, we'll call it 46. I believe that's their second first down of the night. But you can already see a lot more energy in this group. A little bit more pep in the step here for Merrimack. First and 10, another handoff to Hyde. Hyde running with some purpose, finding some daylight finally. You know, the, the biggest difference I've seen from Hyde on these two carries, he's getting a lot lower, and he's getting the legs moving. That You know, you get low, and you're able to avoid those tackles. I mean, that, that's the biggest difference I've seen right now. Push through the pad level, hit the hole. Merrimack offensive line there also able to make some running room for him. A little bit of misdirection there is that another handoff there to Hyde, creating just enough confusion so he can pick his way forward. For another good, good chunk of yardage right there in the ground is the Tomahawk offense down, coming Tomahawks. out, keeping it on the ground, putting the ball in Romello Hyde's hand, and it's paying dividends right now in this drive. It, it sure is. You know, he's getting yardage 
right now in chunks. And uh, that, that was another five Ball or six right, right there. The Cardinal 33 yard line. Ball here on Bishop Girton's 33 yard line. Trent Jackson takes a snap. He's going to hand it off to Hyde again. Hyde finding some great running room. He's able to get up into the second Hyde level. On the carry. Of that BG defense. Board on the tackle. And it, 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 that He's was a penalty free play, first half. And three, uh, that, uh, that was that's unbelievable. It really is unbelievable, especially when you consider how many penalties were in the first half of last week's game. There's another pitch off tackle, Melo Hyde. He's Didn't got hit. a lot of room. There's some flags down on the play, so we'll see if that one's coming back. Hyde yeah, it's lagging the backfield. Hyde never a good play. thing. Usually means there was holding or some other type of nefarious activity on the offense, but as always, we'll await the official call from our tremendous NHIAA refereeing crew. Yep, and uh, Tomahawks are moving back here. I think they feel like this is going to be a holding penalty. And, and, you know, right on cue, Dave, the, the announcer's jinx. You know, I, I, we announced the penalty-free first half, and here's some laundry. I think we'll take collective responsibility for that. Looks like a holding penalty oh, assessed oh, against the Tomahawks. Of course. Momentum killer. Bring up second and 14 Tomahawks. But Hyde has looked really good on this series. You wonder where he was in the first half. Hyde, the ball carrier. Taken out of bounds by Chimalecki and company. Gain of about six on that play to bring up third. Another six-yard carry there for Hyde. For the Tomahawks. Big chunks of yardage there for Hyde. As he's off to a strong start here in the second half as Jackson's going to roll it to his right. That pass intended for number two, that's Centrella. Number three, Ethan Chimalecki all over that. Blowing that play up before it had any real opportunity to develop here, and this is going to bring up Jackson's a rather lengthy fourth down, down here for Chimilecki. the Tomahawks. You have to imagine that they're going to be staying out here on offense. Easily four down territory. And they are Jackson, four wide receivers. He's got Hyde in the backfield. He was right. Jackson steps back. He fires. He looks. And there's going to be a flag on that one. We might get a pass interference call here. Defender with his back to the quarterback all over the receiver. Pass intended for Turley. Yeah, I, you know, it looked like that was number 13, Matt Santa Suasso. Um, on the coverage, I, I don't think he was playing the ball. He was playing the body there. It, it looked like a bailout call. His, that was not a great throw. And that's and where there's a pass, pass interference. interference call. But he was On the Cardinals. He was playing the body. And you have to make some sort of play on the ball. Or else that's a, that's a penalty. You've so. got to turn your head and let go of the receiver in that case. That's, that's sure. a big, big break for the Tomahawks. Kip Jackson and company happy. First to get some of that yardage back after that penalty. Ball on the Cardinals 16 yard line. Yeah, against Ford momentum here. You're ball in BG territory uh, for the first time tonight. Jackson takes a snap, looks left, he fires. That pass, unfortunately, is going to fall Jackson's incomplete. Intended, intended for number for 88, Sadowski. Owen Sadowski. Pass just a bit low right there. I mean, you, you're noticing a difference here with Jackson as well. And, and his throws have a lot more zip on them. They, they got a lot more purpose. Um, I, I I think to be a fly on the wall again in that locker room at halftime, I, I, I bet it was pretty interesting. Seems that whatever Coach Jackson was telling his boys, they came out here ready to charge. Hide on the carry. Start the second half here is Hyde again. Having an inspired drive, able to bring that ball inside the five-yard line, right to the five-yard line. Right? Go hurry up. First down, Tomahawks. And there's Romello Hyde again, keeping those legs churning forward. Some tough yardage he's able to pick up right there. He's able to bring that Hyde ball inside the, the five-yard line. Is Merrimack here? Pick up of about four. They're on the trail. They're on the scent of their first points. Yeah, nice game. Tomahawks. I'd like to change a pace ball here, the four yeah, yard just line. to try something. I mean. Trying to keep BG off their 
on, you know, your heels a little bit. BG defense all over that one. Is they're going to stop Hyde Jackson, for a minimal gain right there. To Hyde. Rhythm and momentum matters so much on the offensive side of the ball here. Sure matters does. in the NFL, matters in the college game, Lots and certainly matters in the high school game here. Tomahawks. Ball on the four. As the Tomahawks no huddle. Coming out, no huddle. Bit more spring in their step. This Hyde looking for somewhere to go. Unfortunately, he's going to run right into the gang tackling. The Cardinals defense right there is they are playing some classic bend but don't break defense here carry. in their own red zone. Gain of about a yard. Bring a fourth, fourth and goal, and goal here Tomahawks. for the Tomahawks. Let's see what they dial up. We had three very uninspiring carries by Hyde. Maybe a little play action here. You're one for one tonight on your calls. Let's see if you're going to get another one right here, Brian. As Jackson takes a snap, he looks to his right, he fires on the slant. Very well covered right there by BG. That pass intended for, Jackson's I believe that was number two, Aiden Centrella. Intended for Day. Excuse me, number 21, Logan Day was the intended receiver, the junior. Broken up by Ballesteri. You know, I, 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 Cardinals I would have tried maybe a jump ball there to, to Turley, or one of the bigger guys. But, you know, I, I, again, you take points anyway you can get them right now. And I, I, the first three play calls, you know, it runs right up the middle. You had Hyde going there for a little bit, and BG able to figure him out there. First and ten Cardinals from their four-yard uh, line. A scoring opportunity squandered there by the Tomahawks. And it's a tough break right there for the Tomahawks, so they did move the ball better than they have all night long. They were able to get Romello Hyde going there, so some positive momentum for sure that they can build off of. Quick movement uh, by Sadia. Flag on the play. I want to thank you for joining us tonight. We'd love to hear from you. We want to give you a shout out. So find Merrimack TV on Facebook or Twitter and comment on our most recent post or tweet. They're both about tonight's game. And let mind. us know the following where you're watching from, how you're watching, and of course, which team you're watching or which team you're cheering for, rather. So. Again, that's facebook.com slash Merrimack TV, and we're on Twitter at Merrimack TV. We'd love to hear from you, and please follow us while you're there. We really appreciate you tuning in tonight's game and supporting high school athletics here in the town of Merrimack. Love you the you are watching Merrimack TV, your community, your voice. Well, like you said earlier, Dave, really nothing better than Friday night football, you know, high, high school football. Uh, you know, it's that time of year. You know, even with your team down 35 nothing, um, still nothing better than coming out on Friday night watching a game under the lights. Uh, you know, really a great tradition. Hit up the new concession stand. That's right. If you're at home tonight, maybe you have a well-constructed, well-thought-out, well-planned, well-built nacho plate. I'm like the you, Gagnon family you, you, does you know, the right level of layers. There is nothing more important to me than Time nacho architecture. Cardinals. So, Nacho architecture right. is the most important thing, and that's what we hope your key takeaway is from tonight's game. <laughs> and we really appreciate you listening to us tonight. Yeah, there, there is nothing worse. You get a plate of nachos, and you, you get that one naked chip. I'm telling you, it, 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 it's so defeating. Put some clothes on that chip. Uh, Put some it, cheese it, on that chip. It, 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 it is so defeating. Put some of that green sauce on that chip. Yes, yes. Maybe absolutely. some jalapenos if you have enough Tums or Arm & Hammer and baking sodas we discussed earlier to combat your heartburn. No, no. If I'm feeling very adventurous, I go with the refried beans. The refried, wow, okay. Uh, you know, but it, again, it, it's sometimes a, a little much. Any diced tomatoes or anything no, like that is? No, no uh, you no, said that definitively too. No, 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 get vegetables off my nachos. Get vegetables off the nachos? Vegetables off my burgers. Vegetables off the burgers, couldn't agree with you more there. Yes. Don't need any vegetables I, 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 on the burgers. I, I, cheese and meat, thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, in fact, leave the salad behind too. Yes. No, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to give a shout out to all of our friends out there that enjoy eating salad and their vegetables and all those things. Thank you for doing that. All, all you healthy people out there. All you healthy people out there. McDonough on the quarterback keeper. Pick up of about seven. Meanwhile, Brian's making me think I first down Cardinals. potentially want to go to the common man after the game and have a nipple nacho plate. So there you go. Ball on their 24-yard yeah, oh yeah, line. It, it, diced tomatoes, black olives, onions, you no. Know, I'm, I'm done. I'm, I'm all set with those. 
I completely agree with you on especially like olives. Yes. If they're on the nachos, no thank you. That's really what you're saying at that point is is that you didn't put enough forethought into the, the, the main carrier. ingredients of your nachos that you're just trying Brought to dress it up Dunn. with olives. Hundred percent. It's like painting over wallpaper. Second and four. Feels Gordon. lazy. Could, couldn't agree more, Dave. <laughs> yeah, if you're just tuning in here, we got 2:40 here left in the third quarter of what has been a one-sided game here. And if you're enjoying tonight's game, make sure you check out more MHS Sports action from Merrimack TV on your Roku, your Amazon Fire TV, or Apple TV device. Be sure to download Cablecast Screenweave to watch the next game live on Bobby the big the screen. This is Merrimack TV, your community, your voice. And First if you're interested in Cardinals. learning more about Merrimack TV or perhaps you'd like your own show on the community channel, be sure to email Nicholas and Justin, MerrimackTV at MerrimackNH.gov. Looks like we have a player down here on the Merrimack side. Hopefully he's okay. I believe that is Ryan Turley. And while we have a moment, we do, we, you know, Dave did mention some of the content online. You, know, you can check out some of our old games. I will tell you, Justin and I were uh, back at the high school for a, uh, j just an all-time classic volleyball matchup uh, this past Wednesday night between these two schools. Uh, BG came in, you know, just absolutely loaded. Uh, won the first two games pretty handily, and uh, Merrimack comes back, comes storming back, wins games three and four, and uh, you know, just did a, a, a tremendous job in that match, uh, forcing a fifth game. Uh, fourth game is 25-23, uh, just an awesome, awesome game. Uh, check it out, highly entertaining. Uh, the girls just put everything they had into it. It, it was a it, great, great match. Uh, BG won three, three to two. That's pretty amazing, and for those at home that don't know this, Brian is actually the voice of Merrimack Tomahawk basketball, both the girls and boys varsity teams, and also the volleyball team as well. Uh, so Brian, very, very well for, very, very well versed here in all the athletics happening across Merrimack, and uh, really, really lucky to have him here tonight calling football. This has been a lot of fun so far. Oh, this is this is great, and, and, and you know, of course, I tell you to go check out the game and then tell you everything that happened in the game. So, you know, it, it, so much for the tease. No, Brian, I think that's a uh, terrific tease because I bet there are people at home right now pondering their nacho plate and then how Pick they're going to eat those nachos the while Second they watch the replay seven. of the volleyball game from earlier this week. The classic, the barn burner between the Merrimack Tomahawks and at the Cardinal, it, it, Cardinal it was, Bishop Curtin. It was tremendous. I, you know, um, really, really compelling match. And um, you know, we haven't had, you know, you know the first two or three volleyball games that we did um, on Merrimack. It was all three sets, you know, over three sets. One team just completely dominated. This, this was tremendous. A changing quarterback here, I believe. BG here getting some repetitions in for some of the other players here on their roster with this game, mostly in hand Glad here the as they have a comfortable 35 to nothing lead. Is there a, it, such a thing as an uncomfortable 35 to nothing Gain of lead? two on that play, bring up third and five Cardinals. There's one game that I remember watching when I was when I was young, and I'm gonna let the audience watching at home tonight know how Ball old I am. 42. 40 years old, and I remember watching the Buffalo Bills play the Houston Oilers mm, in I think it was 1992, maybe 93. Someone at home can check me on this. And. The Houston Oilers went in at halftime ahead, I believe, 35-3. to three, and three. As, I think they were ahead as much as 38-3 at one point. Buffalo came back and won that game 41-38. to 38. So I think if you're a longtime fan of the Houston Oilers, you probably never feel comfortable with a lead like that. Although the Houston Oilers are now the Titans. Now you Plus have the seven. Texans down in Houston. On the I don't know if there were real Oilers fans the left. Maybe they just became converted First Titans fans or Texans fans later on. But... I think that's probably the only instance of a 35 nothing lead where I don't think I'd feel super comfortable. Yeah, that, that um, that's actually the end of the third that's a very quarter, good one. It's a heck of a game too. Um, Tomahawks, zero. Once you're done checking out all the awesome content on Merrimack TV on YouTube, look up that uh, look up that playoff game. Buffalo is also being quarterbacked uh, by Frank Reich, who's the uh, backup on that team. Pretty amazing comeback there. 
Dave, I got a couple shout outs over here if I could uh, just pop in for just a moment. Justin, you absolutely should pop in. Let's hear who's out there in TV land watching us tonight. All right, well, we got uh, Nathan Fuller out there in TV land. He's actually technically in Nashville, New Hampshire. He says, go BG football. Um, got to feel pretty good tonight, Nathan, with that 35-0 uh, lead currently going into the fourth. Still a long 12 minutes left, so we'll see how it pans out. Uh, we also have uh, Tripod, uh, let's see, Tripod Mom, or the also known as Tripod Angel Mom on Twitter. This, uh, this message was going probably right at the top of the first half when Tomahawks had that nice drive. She says, yes, go Tomahawks. Get ready for the greatest comeback in high school football history. I like Hashtag. that enthusiasm. Hashtag show us your snacks. And she says, hello from Houston. First down, Tomahawks. She also says she's having dinner here in the central time zone. Indian chickpea dinner over couscous and spinach. Oh, so that sounds real good. She also sent a photo there, so you can go check out the Merrimack TV page and see that photo there. It's looking pretty tasty to me. It's just about uh, just about dinner time for old Justin over here. So about 12 minutes to go, and I'll be feeding my food hole. Holmes, the now, Justin, what will be for dinner on defenders? the menu uh, in your household tonight for dinner? Um, I hate to hammer home the nacho thing tonight, but uh, it's in my nacho head now. too. I'm a big and nacho fan. I'm right. no, no joke when it comes yes. to nachos. This I is the actually, nacho studio. <laughs> it is a nacho <laughs> studio. I had uh, I had nachos um, two nights ago, and you know what? Uh, it's it's been uh, about two nights too long for me. So you got to get back on the nacho train, Justin. I think I might just have to do that. Would you say this is nacho typical studio? <laughs> I'll let you say that, Brian. Danger here, some nacho puns flying out <laughs> into the Tackle broadcast the here. The Merrimack defense doing a great job right there getting into the, the backfield. It's 35 nothing. Generating a big loss right there. Becoming a high school sports official is an easy call. Officiating allows you to continue to be a role model while demonstrating qualities such as impartiality, fairness and courage. High school sports officials help protect the integrity of the games we love by teaching and enforcing the rules of play. New officials have an opportunity to make a difference in their communities right away. To learn more about becoming a high school sports official, please visit www.nhiaa.org. Awesome stuff. And also, just want to give a, a quick plug and a shout out. Uh, just for the volunteer experience here at Merrimack TV, Brian and I were uh, we're talking uh, off air uh, before tonight's broadcast and during halftime as well about just what an awesome experience this has been. As I mentioned before, Brian uh, does the broadcast for volleyball and basketball for the high school. Does a tremendous job. Um, also, want to shout out Andy Berkeley, who you're hearing on the public address. Uh, announcing tonight uh, down at the field. He also does uh, Merrimack High Hockey uh, for the channel. Also want to give a big shout out to Mark Heimberg who does uh, MHS Boys and Girls Varsity Soccer. And uh, of course, I'm Dave Carter, normally joined by Ralph Carpentier who couldn't join us this week. Uh, we've been bringing you your varsity football broadcast. So just really cool. Brian, I got to ask you, like, how did you get into into doing announcing and into volunteering? How did you get, how'd you get hooked up with Merrimack TV? So... It really started for me in college when I was um, when I was a student at SNHU, and we, we started the. Um, and again, I'm 40 like you. Um, we were on a dial-up connection doing basketball games, and, and uh, you know we started doing the web broadcasts of our basketball and hockey games, and so um, I was doing a lot of broadcasting in college, and um, I actually reached out to Nick about a year before COVID. Ball on the top said, of you, know, you guys ever six yard line? decide to cover sports need play by play you know, I'm happy to help out and um, Nick actually pulled my email up and said hey we're starting to do sports now uh, with the pandemic nobody's nobody's showing up at games so um, you know we're starting to cover sports you want to do some basketball for us I said do I want to do some basketball said, of course you want to do some basketball I'll, I'll be there with bells on coach Brian come so, on of course he's here course. so um, and that's the, Gain of 15 the on that play. story of how I got involved one. For the Cardinals. That's that's super awesome. And, and for those, again, watching at home tonight, you know, tuning in for tonight's broadcast, first, thank you. Secondly, if you're interested in volunteering, make sure you reach out to, to Nicholas and to Justin, Merrimack TV at MerrimackNH.gov. Maybe you have interest in doing some camera work. Maybe you yourself want to do some play-by-play. -play. 
Maybe you want to replace me because you're sick of listening to me. Whatever it might be, please reach out to Justin Slez, the Assistant Media Services Coordinator, and Media Services Coordinator, Nicholas LaValle, uh, to learn more about potentially volunteering, maybe even getting your own show here on the Community TV channel. Uh, again, cannot sing the praises of our friends here at Merrimack TV enough. It really is an absolute honor and an absolute Ball pleasure to volunteer. So reach out if you're interested in doing some volunteer work yourself. As this is really a tremendous community here to be a part of. With nine minutes left here in the fourth quarter and what has been a very, very one-sided affair. On yeah, I think this game was pretty much over with about 10 20 to go. <laughs> what, it was 14 nothing. Actually, I think it was 10 40. A minute 20 seconds into the game, it was already 14 nothing. And you, you can kind of see the wheels coming off right away. Uh, but again, tip of the cap to, to BG. No question about it. And ultimately, regardless of the score, tip of the cap to all these student athletes. Yes. You know, they're getting it done in the classrooms. They're getting it done here on the gridiron tonight. Many of them, I'm sure, play different sports throughout the year. I know a few of them you've even recognized just from your experience calling basketball games. Um, so it's really great just to see these student athletes and this whole community come together and, and rally around events like this, rally around Friday night football, you know, under the lights at the high school. Uh, it really is an absolute honor and a pleasure to be able to, to call these games and to be a part of these broadcasts. Merrimack is a phenomenal community, which is Tons of world-class people. Also want to take a moment here just to give a quick shout-out on my own to the Malone family, to Amy, to Matt, Jackson, Brooks, and Shea. Hope all are well. Holmes on the carry. They may actually be down at the stadium tonight, and if they're not and they are tuning in and watching, I hope their nachos are as well-structured as the Gagnon family's nachos. I feel like you should enter these nachos into a, like a nacho competition. I should. Maybe that's an idea for a TV show here at the studio. This is the great nacho cook-off. It'll be the Iron Chef, but like every week the ingredient will be nachos. Not that nachos are an ingredient, but we'll give you the... I wouldn't be a competitor, I'd be a nachos. judge. That's fair. Yeah, you want to be the judge in that case. McDonough on the you have a high degree keeper. of expertise. Can, can, I, can I also, while we're on the topic, you know, guacamole and sour cream, on the play. I, I, I can't do it. Uh, I can't do it either. Okay, play, it's got to be, and two, gotta be on the side. A little bit overrated in my... I've, my take. I think extremely over. A good fresh guac with just some chips for a little dipping, not bad, but yeah. You know, I don't think uh, I think there are just there's there are better ways to dress up your chips as you were mentioning earlier. Oh, no question. Several different cheeses named after Jacks, you know. Yes. Green salsas, a lot of great choices out there. As Tomahawk defense here able to gobble that one up at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage here. 6.30 remaining in tonight's ball game. And, and we really have gone off the rails, huh? Now for a Cardinal first we down, haven't quite first reached like Bob Cardinals. Euchre levels of going off the rails, but... Not yet. It's, it's plenty of time. <clears throat> it's be a good time to mention, too, that the town of, town of Merrimack's media division is branded Merrimack TV. The division is funded by way of franchise fees from Comcast cable subscribers in Merrimack. The town of Merrimack has a community TV facility located at 6 Babusik Lake Road. Our three cable channels reach over 8,000 homes. We're accessible online at MerrimackTV.com and on Roku, Amazon Fire, and Apple TV devices via the cable cast screen weave. So make sure you get that app on those devices. You can talk about some of the games Brian was mentioning earlier, including that barn burner, that classic that you got to call earlier this week when BG rolled into town and took on Merrimack volleyball team in what sounds like potentially a game of the year candidate, match yeah. of the year candidate. It was a little closer than this one. Just a bit by the sounds of it here. As BG on to attempt the extra point, it's number eight, Connor Lennon. And that kick is gonna be good here. It can, and the point I'm, gonna, the I'm gonna shout Lennon. out. Connor Lennon, because he has, With in this win tonight, in the game, he has knocked through, Cardinals. I believe, four extra four points. Four extra points, yep. Um, not not an easy task. <laughs> I mean, not at all. You know, um, Brian, I can barely get into my truck. You think I'm kicking, putting my leg up that high to, like, kick an extra point? No. That's a hammy getting torn. 
Oh, I'd be in traction. Right. ACL snapping. Something bad would happen if I were yeah. doing that. So it's good that you and I here are in the comfort, the warm, comfortable uh, confines of the Merrimack TV studio. Yeah, I, I mean, B, BG went for two after the, the initial touchdown. Um, Merrimack got the stop, and then uh, they went for two again. We got that. And since then, they've been kicking extra points. He's he's nailed Led all four. Kick off for the Cardinals. For this tonight. Some tough kicking conditions tonight too. Very I haven't tough. been outside the since I got here, but certainly when I rolled into the studio around six o'clock, it was still quite windy and it was getting a bit chilly out there. So. BG's just going to squib kick this one. Merrimack's going to fall on top of that kick. And they will take over here on offense on their own 25-yard line. So as we talked about here at the, at the start of the second half, it's about building some momentum here. Kip Jackson and his team, this is a quality Tomahawks team. They've had two strong wins here to start the year. They dominated Oliver and open it up. And then last week, the score probably a bit closer than what that game actually was as they were able to defeat South in their home opener. Tonight, bit of a tough break here, running a, running up against a really high quality Bishop Girton Cardinals football team. As you were mentioning earlier, they are looking a like a dominant force here. Oh yeah, they're a uh, they're a state championship contender for sure. Um, I, I I really think the short list is BG and Londonderry and everybody else. Uh, I, I mean, I, I can't I can't think of another team. In, in Division One, that you know, right now would, would contend with these guys. Uh, I mean, you're seeing it tonight. Merrimack had just no answers for BG starting. Uh, starting. Here. No, and, and as you had mentioned, BG here really looking to assert themselves as the class of the NHI AA 2022 season here, the varsity football season, as they have really come out here and put up a dominant performance between two undefeated teams here have to tip your cat though to the Merrimack Tomahawks they have played hard throughout this game no surprise there Kip Jackson always has his teams keyed up and ready to go right there in the keeper that's number four that's number four Sahil Mujawar sophomore showing some wheels right there yeah pretty good speed by the youngster Gain of six on the play, second and four Tomahawks. Second down here, four yards to go with under five minutes here left in the fourth quarter. Both teams here mostly moved in their sub packages. Nice pass right there. It's going to be complete to number 14. That's Jackson Forbes. It's senior. Taking a couple of BG tacklers with him here as he goes past midfield. Big gain on the play. Ujuar showing off some... Good arm strength and accuracy right there, zipping that ball in there. That was a bullet. Uh, what a throw by Mujawar. Good connection right there. And Merrimack here, first and 10 on the BG 48-yard line. Mujawar flushed out here to his right, looking down the field, keeping his eyes down there the whole time. He finds another open receiver complete. That's number 15. Bo Lamontagne, the sophomore, able to reel that one in. Mujawar looking very impressive here. Play, and granted, I, I mean, most of the BG starters are probably out of the game at this point, but these are some tough throws. Tough throws on the move. Real impressed, too, with his ability to keep his eyes down the field as he's rolling out. That pass right there is going to be complete to number 10. That's Joshua Ozog. Sophomore. And, and, and you know, he, he's doing this. They, they're going into the Bob Seeger end zone here. Five on the play. Against the wind. Second Against the wind. Ball on the 30 yard line. <laughs> I promise I will not sing that whole song to everybody. Bourgeois here handing it off on the jet sweep to number 15. Again, it's Bo Lamontagne. Sophomore. Merrimack here putting together a little bit of a drive. In the waning moments sweep. here of this ball game, third and four Tomahawks. I was waiting for an opportunity to use that all night, and it you just snuck it in there itself. perfectly. You know, I would give that a instead of thumbs up, two thumbs up. 
I'd say like three layers of cheese. Oh, perfect. I think four is the max, because then you're starting to get to a real tower. Three, though, that's probably preferred. Ooh, nice carry. Gujuar showing some wheels right here. He's able to bring that down inside the 15, all the way down to the BG 11-yard line. Nice play right there, showing off some great athleticism, able to find some open space in daylight. And they're going to be moving those chains forward again here as the Tomahawks looking to better late than never as they're aiming to put some points up on the board here before we close this one out. You know, at worst, you're getting a glimpse maybe into the future here. Uh, you know, Majaro looking very impressive. BG having a hard time bringing him down. Mujoir on the quarterback keeper. Mujoir keeping that one right there. Having himself a, about three heck of a on series the here so far. Maybe four. And, and, you know, aside from that first drive of the second half, this is the best. They've moved the ball all night. No question about it here. Building some positive momentum for them to take into the week of practice in their next game. Lujoir here looking for some open space. Unfortunately, he's unable to find any right there. Mujoir Not able to pull a rabbit out of, out of the half there necessarily. Rangio with the tackle. As we are now under a minute 30 remaining in this Lost ball game. yards on that play. will bring up third and 10 Tomahawks. Yes, yeah, so, you know, again, if you're Merrimack here, you, you don't want to get shut out. Get some, get some points up on the board. Byron is right. Got a screen with a convoy of blockers. That's number 32, Dominic Helmig again. Enough for first. Bourgeois screen pass. Chip it away. Gain of about seven on the play, bring a fourth and three for the Tomahawks. Here they got get it in. Fourth and three here. So you can hear the crowd starting to get into it a little. They don't Tomahawk want to Nation wants to see a touchdown tonight. Absolutely. I want to see a Time touchdown tonight. I, so. I hope we get to see one. Yeah, you, you think for the students here, I mean, I mean, it becomes a... a, a a pride factor, obviously. A pride factor. And what a passionate base of students, too. They are very clearly all still there tonight, still cheering on their team. You, know, you, you do not want to get shut out by a rival you know, um, at home. You know, it, it, a touchdown here could do a little for your confidence. BG here is going to looks to remain undefeated tonight. Merrimack here is going to move to 2-1. and one on what has still been a very promising start to this 2022 campaign. Coming off a couple of good wins here to start the year. Tough break tonight, running into a very strong Bishop Girton team. Nonetheless here, Merrimack still very well positioned for a playoff berth. Yeah, he's still gonna play North, I know that. And some of the other, you know, Keene and Bedford, I believe, are also in their division. Should be quite an interesting season here. Mujawar looking to his left, getting flushed out. He fires it anyways. That pass is complete. Oh. What a play, and Merrimack scores a touchdown here in the closing moments of the second half. That ball complete to number 14, Jackson Forbes, the senior. What a nice gift for that senior. Great throw light there by Mujawar, the sophomore. Able to break free. Digging into his bag of tricks right there. I don't Pulls know. Pulls some wizardry. Made that one happen. I don't know how the heck he got rid of that football, but he was able to do that and complete that pass for a touchdown. Great play right there. That was outstanding. And the Tomahawks will Able to use his legs to keep that one alive just a little bit longer. Just enough time where he could find Jackson Forbes. Or the connection here is Merrimack's going to go for two. Mujoir here looking for some space. He fires and unfortunately couldn't quite Mujawar pull the rabbit out of the hat the there. He took a this licking there. But nonetheless, With that's a touchdown. You're not getting game. shut out at home. Not getting shut out at home. Cardinals that's a big moral victory Tomahawks. right there for the Tomahawks. They're going to have a lot to build on after tonight's game. As they say, you can't get better unless you take on better competition. 100%. And that's going to be the takeaway, I think, for the Merrimack Tomahawks tonight. Tip of the cap to BG. That is one strong football team that will most assuredly factor in to the state championship here. 
They got uh, Keene next Saturday on the road, and then come home for your last two home games. You get Spalding and Nashua North. Uh, that that game against North on the 14th is going to be a big one uh, for Merrimack as far as the you know the division and, and the playoff picture and what game. that looks like. And will they get a home game? Will they not get a home game? Mm -hmm. It's going to be a very exciting season here. Schritt on the kickoff for the Tomahawks. Sanisuazo back deep for the Cardinals. Take a look through the uh, the standings here, and yeah, it, it's really it's going to be Londonderry and BG. Uh, I, you know, Pinkerton also came into tonight three and one, and they just got trounced by Londonderry. So uh, it, it's it's really about those two Tritz teams. Kick. I think they're the, the out of class of Division One, um, and, and then really it's everybody else. I think maybe you put Merrimack in that second tier of teams, um, you know, but. Clearly, BG is in a. They're in another. A two and one. You, you have to figure that you know Merrimack, th despite tonight's result, they're still very much in that mix, that Game of Thrones, as far as you know the best teams you know mm -hmm. right now in the state. I think that that assessment of them being you know maybe illegal, just a tick below maybe a BG or a Londonderry right now is probably an accurate assessment here. We'll have to see you know how this team kind of continues to come together here throughout the course of the season. We know Kip Jackson's going to have something to build on here after tonight's loss. Yeah, I mean, you got opportunities coming up here with Keene and Spalding and, and Goffstown. I mean, those, those, those are games I think you got to win if you're Merrimack. Um, and then you got Bedford and, and, um, and North also on the schedule. That, that, those are your games um, coming up. So I, th I think Merrimack has an opportunity here to um, at least get in the playoff picture and, and do some damage. No question about that. Should be a fantastic season. Brian. This has been an absolute honor and a pleasure, sir. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Again, folks, Brian Gagnon joining us on tonight's broadcast. You can hear him broadcasting Merrimack High School volleyball and basketball all year long when those sports are in season. And uh, it was really just an honor and a pleasure to have you here tonight, Brian. Yeah. I had a ton of fun with you. Uh, we'll be back for our next home broadcast in two weeks where Ralph Carpentier will be joining me again in studio. Uh, but that is a wrap on tonight's game. So your result, the Bishop Girton Cardinals put up 42 points on your Merrimack Tomahawks as they defeat them 42-6 to here in uh, what was a runaway game, I think, from Jump Street. A lot, for, uh, a lot of positive things, though, I think, in the second half for the Tomahawks to build off of here. Some, some flashes on offense. They were able to build some momentum. So they will certainly be back and looking to rebound uh, from this loss next week. Uh, but with that said, thank you all so very, very much for joining us. Brian, thank you again for being here. This is a real pleasure. Had a lot of fun. Had a ton of fun as well. I want to thank Media Services Coordinator Nicholas Lavalle on camera tonight and Assistant Media Services Coordinator Justin Slez, who is back here in studio. Uh, on behalf of all those folks and all of our friends here at Merrimack TV, I'm Dave Carter. Thank you all so much for joining us tonight. Have a great rest of your Friday evening, and make sure you put plenty of cheese on your nachos. Have a good night, everybody.